What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the uh, Conquering the JavaScript interview series where we're tackling common algorithms and data structures to help prepare you to pass that interview. We're here with a freaking classic today that can be solved in so many different goofy, fun, and crazy ways. I've got some fun plans for FizzBuzz in particular. If you're not familiar with this somehow, which I don't know how you've gotten in development and managed to miss this, FizzBuzz is this classic algorithm question, like very beginner friendly and oriented question that puts into light like the building, the foundation to get into more and more complex interview questions. So, you know, I thought about tackling it at first, but I figured that'd be just way too cliche to do FizzBuzz as my very first beginner series video. So I kind of saved it off for here. And like I said, I'll probably actually have more than one video on FizzBuzz and solving it because there's just so many clever and goofy and fun ways to solve this one. And I really do think it opens up the floor in your interview process, especially if you're not doing this as like a take home assignment. Like if you're at a whiteboard style interview and you can have a conversation with your interviewer and even make them laugh, that is just killer, killer stuff. So while I would solve FizzBuzz in a traditional way at my own interview, um, I would also have some, depending on my audience, like if it looks like I'm vibing with the culture at where I'm interviewing and the interviewers seem cool cool and fun, I would throw in some really goofy answers pointing out that they're indeed for funsies and not my real take on how I'd write this. But yeah, the, we're going to have some videos that cover some really goofy solutions. And one that I'm going to have a guest on with my co-instructor, Andrew, which I think has one of the most goofy and fun solutions I've ever seen. And I would love to just I would love to go to this interview just so I could use his answer. But for now, we're going to take it seriously. I'm going to show you all in this video two different ways to solve this problem. One that gets newbies that I've noticed when teaching in my full stack boot camp, really thinking about clever ways to use code to solve problems. So uh, breaking all that down out of the way, let's get into it, says guy that just delayed. Let's get into it. There we go. Okay, so we're going to write an algorithm that's going to take a number argument n, uh, and it's going to print every number from one to including n, and every number that's divisible by three should print fizz instead of the number. Every div number divisible by five should print buzz instead of the number, and every number divisible by both three and five should print fizz buzz in place of the number. So if we pass in and call this function with an n of 10, we would see one, two, fizz, four, buzz, fizz, because six is divisible by three, seven, eight, fizz, and buzz. Right, and then we continued on to 15 where we'd finally get fizzbuzz because that's the first number that will print divisible by three and five. So there we go. That is what our uh, output needs to look like. And let's get started. We have our function called fizzbuzz with our argument number n and let's get going. Unlike in previous videos where I said, always remember to return something from your function. This is actually one of the exceptions to that rule. This function doesn't need to return anything to be tested. Uh, its sole purpose is to print information. So what's another fun anecdote about this question is when I was in the covalence boot camp, we still had, we were, they were still doing and experimenting with in-person stuff. When I came through as a student, I'm basically the one that guinea pigged our full stack online course. Um, so you're welcome for my, the feedback that helped build it to what it is today and my own contributions to it now as a teacher and content creator here at Covalence. Uh, yeah, like I, they came into our class, uh, uh, a developer in the building we were at and we were, he was talking about the interview process and the technical interview and stuff like that. And this is actually a question that he asked us and someone volunteered to come to the whiteboard to try and solve. And they solved it in the first go. And he was like, all right, cool. And it opened. And then we started discussing more about optimization and things like that, because that's where you can really hone in this question from beginner to intermediate and even advanced when you talk about opt optimizing the solution, right? So the easiest way I can think to solve it is conditionally. First off, let's go ahead and start printing our numbers. We're going to do that with our classic for loop. We're going to set up i starting at one instead of the traditional zero because we're not looping through an array. We're starting the we're starting this out at one so we can start counting from that number. No reason to have to do some shift math to start at zero. A lot of my students only use for loops to loop through arrays of index points, which is why they always start at zero. But I always had to remind them it can start anywhere you want, y'all. We're going to do i is less than or equal to n because it needs to print up to n, including the number n that we provide. And we also have to increment the number by one. So simply printing now what we have going on, console log i. I'm probably going to have to clear this terminal window several times to this process because it's going to get nasty fast. But let's go ahead and see what happens when I call this function, fizzbuzz, 
with a value of say 15 and we're gonna save it and there we go. No problem right there, up and running. Now, that's gonna be the generic condition, basically what we can think of as our else statement, just print the number as is. So what we're gonna do now is print if else, and we're gonna move that console log into the else because that's gonna be our generic condition. Uh, this is something that I teach my students because I, I don't know why I thought this way when I was a student. I always crafted my if else statements kind of like reverse logic where I would say, if this condition is not met, then that's the generic condition. Otherwise, do this specific thing I want. Like, I I remember trying to solve this, and I made it, like, if it's not divisible by 3, 5, then print the i, right? Like, I reversed the logic. And, the, and what you want to do with your if-else statements is you want the if to be your specific condition, your niche case scenario, and your else needs to be the generic case. Again, I don't know why I did it reverse as a student, probably because I'm just brain broken, but I've seen some of my students also kind of fall in that trap. And thankfully, I, I mean, early on, I catch them doing that in their code reviews for our Catalyst students. And I tell them, no, 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 no. If needs to be the specific niche scenario, else is your generic. That'll be the more efficient and optimized solution. So the, what's the most specific scenario we have if it's divisible by both three and five? So uh, if you're a newbie, then you don't know this operator. If you've been coding a while, if you know what FizzBuzz is, you probably already know this solution anyway, and I don't know what you're doing here. But we have this operator called the modulus operator. And what it does is it does a division operation. And instead of giving us the quotient like the division operation does, the modulus operator gives us the remainder. And that's how we can test to see if numbers are odd or even or evenly divisible by something such as three. So if I is divisible by three and has no remainder, that means it must be divisible evenly by three, which would be a print of fizz. But I said we're going to make this if statement our most, uh, our most niche scenario, which is fizz buzz, which means it has to be the following. There we go. If it's both divisible by three and five, it must print instead fizz but. but. <laughs> I can't believe I typoed that. How did I even do that? The Z is not even near the T. It's like my finger didn't shift over for some reason. Fizz butt. But we have fizz buzz. What we're going to do is save this and confirm that it indeed... Again, I'll have to clear this a couple times. Sorry, folks. Let's clear it and let it run again. There we go. Yeah, so check it out. We have our most niche case scenario now. And for my math nerds out there, we don't actually have to do this uh, logical and operator to do this operation, meaning test to see if it's by three and test to see if it's by five. For my math, ne mer out math nerds out there, we can actually make this a, a bit more optimized by ditching two operations and combining them into one. And we can do that by simply saying, if it's evenly divisible by three times five, which gets us 15, it has to be divisible by both. So that's how we can optimize this even further to get the right solution here, okay? So next, we can also do the following. We can provide ourselves an there we go. And else if condition, we can say else if, if it's by five individually, we want to print buzz like so. And then we can go ahead and write our final condition. Like I said, not too hard. If you know these tricks already, I by three is fizz and not fit. <laughs> okay, there you go. We have our loop, we have our conditions, we have our specific cases and our generic case down yonder, and we have a classic fizzbuzz solution. I didn't save the file. <laughs> I didn't save the file and I reran the terminal. There we go. <laughs> One, two fizz, four buzz, six fizz, seven, eight, nine fizz, 10 buzz, 11, 12 fizz, 13, 14, and 15 fizz buzz. We did it, folks. That is going to be like your most classic solution that you will see a lot of beginner developers do and why I wanted to include it here. But I feel like as many, as you know, there's just so many crazy ways to solve this one. And uh, this next solution I'm going to include in this video rather than break it into two, because that just seems kind of hacky to break it into two small videos like that. And we're already, we're, this is already so kind of simple if you have any experience whatsoever that uh, let's have another way of looking at this problem. Because as of right now, this will do check this, then check this, then check this, otherwise do this, right? And that's fine as a solution, but let's, let's kind of turn this one on its head and see if we can't 
change the way we approach the solution here. What if we just have one variable that prints no matter what, right? And that's a pretty interesting thing we can do here. So we're going to change it up, right? We're going to ditch the condition. Now, the for loop part can't really change because we have to just print those numbers every single time. But what I am going to do now is we're going to have a variable-based output. And it's going to be an empty string starting at the beginning of the loop. And no matter what happens throughout this loop, we are going to simply print whatever the output happens to be. Okay? So clearly, we're simply going to customize this output as we go along. And we're going to say if the output length of the string is still zero, if it's still zero by the end of this uh, loop portion, then we're going to assign the output as i. And if you want to be consistent, we can even call to string on it to make sure it's always going to be a string and not changing types because i is going to be a number from our for loop here if you want to be technical about strings and numbers and things like that. Uh, I don't really care too much, but I wanted to point it out there that you that all can take that in consideration. Because we're outputting a string, I don't know why we want to output a number at one point and strings on the other side, like over here, right? So now, that's right. So it should now it should simply print out everything as is. If I actually save the file, Luke, my guy. There we go, run it again, and there we go. Prints out everything as a string. That's that white value here in my terminal in VS Code. And you saw there were yellow in the previous example. If you go back and look at the output in the... In the previous solution, you saw that there were yellow number data types being printed along with strings. For consistency's case, you can take stuff like this into consideration. You want to make sure your output is always of the same type and not different types. Something to take into mind. So yeah, okay. So now we have to set up some conditions to say altering the output in our other cases, right? So check this out. If the number is evenly divisible by 3, we can take output and simply concatenate fizz onto it. See that? So now if we reprint this, we already have it working correctly for all of the divisible by threes. And here's the clever part as well. And I had to do it in this order for this reason. If it's also evenly divisible by five, we can simply take what the output currently is, which might be fizz already, and simply concatenate buzz onto the end of it. Wasn't that clever? And guess what? Come on. There we go. Boom. I, th I think this blew my mind the most when I was a total newbie. When I, when I saw someone approach the problem like this, I'm like, that is clever. Right? That is like not my, – my brain immediately went to if, else, if, else, if, else as a solution. And I was like, why would you do anything else? And again, this is just a fun way to kind of – if you're not thinking like this to get your your you know your brain to go okay okay I can see some other clever ways I could use like a string that I can catenate over time to build up my answer or my output or something like that. I really love looking at solutions like this and I've I mean there's been times where like I'll be bored in the middle of the day or at lunch and I'll just go Google Fizzbuzz solutions and take a look at some of the wild and even meme based solutions people throw out there because I'm all about that life and that's what makes this so much more fun and tolerable than just than just saying, okay, this is interview prep and that's all I'm ever going to think of it as. Try and actually make it fun. You'll remember more. You'll have a, a better time remembering this stuff and being able to spit it out on a whiteboard or a take-home assignment or in a notepad or whatever. But yeah, it's a really clever solution. You have an empty string that as long as it stays empty through these two conditions, it will simply uh, convert it to a string. That's a cool thing to keep in mind for consistent output. And then whatever happens, it's going to log that. So if there is no string concatenation occurring beforehand, just take the current number and print it out. If it's divisible by three, take the output, concatenate it with fizz. That means this check will then fail and not add i to it, and it will output the keyword fizz. If it's divisible by five only, it will skip this one, concatenates buzz like we see here, right? Buzz. And then it will skip this, then output buzz. If it's both three, concatenates fizz, and five, it will concatenate buzz at the end of fizz like we see here and then output it. And I like I said, I think this is a clever and cool solution, and hopefully it will blow somebody's mind out there like it did to mine when I was a newbie going through algorithm and like leak code and hacker rank and stuff like that to prepare for my interview process back in the day. Back in my, the wee days of being a wee lad back in 
2000 or whatever, 2015 or something like that. Yeah, so that's it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, and prepare to see more goofy FizzBuzz videos coming in the future along with special guest Andrew coming on in uh, a, a one of my favorite FizzBuzz answers ever. So ta-ta for now.